Hello there. A few years ago, we hosted an artist, Jane Bettridge, who painted a wonderfully vibrant sunflower with us. Um, who would have known how pertinent the sunflower would be, what with the Ukrainian crisis as it is at the moment. So what we've done is we've taken that class video and we've re-edited it a little bit and we're releasing it now, the full video. And what we'd like to encourage you to do um, is to paint along and while you're painting along um, if you've got any children while they're painting along just give some thought or use it as a catalyst for discussing what's happening in uh, Ukraine and when you have finished with that sunflower maybe consider putting it in your window or, or sharing it online or, or whatever something that symbolizes a bit of solidarity with the crisis um, there's also a fundraiser we've linked with the Red Cross and you should see it somewhere on the left or right side or on the bottom I don't know quite where YouTube puts it but um, I'd encourage you also to maybe make a small donation if you wouldn't mind to the Red Cross to help with that humanitarian aid it mean an awful lot to us thank you Yeah, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me again. And today, um, as you probably know, we're painting a sunflower head. So we have to keep things really simple in this short time. And this is a really easy, simple painting to do, but quite effective. And the reason it's quite effective is we're adding things to our watercolor, doing things to our watercolors to make our painting more interesting. You know, if you said to someone, paint a sunflower, I'm sure they'd paint a brown circle and then petals coming off in yellow and each petal would be the same size and it'd all be perfect. Well, I don't like paintings like that. I like paintings with a bit of character and I like flowers with a bit of character as well. There's actually 70 varieties of sunflowers. I looked it up so I could tell you that. And... Um, I've given you a picture um, where you saw the materials list and the particular sunflower I like, I don't know what it's called, but it's kind of a raggedy one with shorter petals rather than the big, you know, petals coming out in the smaller centre, because I think it's the centre of these flowers that are the most interesting part of the whole flower because they're really textured, they're big, they're just characterful, you know, and um, so that's what we're, I'm trying to do today to show you um, trying to create a painting that's got character and that's different to anyone else's sunflower you'll see. So shall we get started? Jane, could you just quickly run through several people asking, could you run through the colours again? Yes, I shall do that. Um, it's so simple, there's only four colours. There's a bright yellow, a dark yellow, a blue and a brown. And there's no, it doesn't matter which one, which colours they are, you know, there's about 20 lemon yellows and bright yellows and there's about 20 dark yellows. So just a lemony yellow, I'm using cadmium lemon. I'm using quinacridone gold for a really dark orangey yellow and um, Van Dyke brown, which is a, bog standard just darkish brown paint and then French ultramarine blue which is like a medium um, blue colour that everyone who paints watercolour will have this it's the most popular watercolour shade I should imagine in, there is so just a medium blue bright yellow dark yellow and a brown and then to make it even more interesting I'm adding some gold and you, you can add gold acrylic gold ink um, gold watercolour you can get actually. This is gold powder and you just mix it with a bit of water and it's a really nice thing to have and uh, I use this a lot so you'll see if you haven't got any you'll see just how good it is and then it might um, whet your appetite to buy some because it is really good. So you know I, if those people who know me I don't do a lot of drawing because I find that tightens you up when you're painting and I want a loose painting. So all we're drawing is a circle. I think we can all manage that. And I'm just drawing around this tube, this reel of um, masking tape on the outside. So it's about four and a half inches um, diameter, you know, just round the edge in the middle of the um, 
paper um you know it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be exactly in the middle because it's such a loose painting we'll lose this exact circle anyway so just get something that size roughly you know a, a little dish or a basin or a big mug and just draw around it or a big can of gesso or something that you've got in your art kit now the paper i'm using um today i've got it taped down because this is a bockingford paper and it's only 140 pound and i normally work on 300 pound paper which is a lot thicker and it, that doesn't need taping down but what i'm going to do um, is show you the technique and then i'll be working back into one that i've already started because i don't think ours will be dry enough so just in case i've got another one that's on the thicker paper and um, this paper's fine, but it, as I say, it cockles when you, you use a lot of water. So as everyone drew in the circle, I'm sure um, that didn't take more than a couple of seconds. So we can get started. Right, so we need to mix up the colours. OK, we need all the colours mixing up and the gold as well. Now, they need to be the consistency of single cream and each one roughly the single you know all the same roughly single cream consistency so i'm going to let you i've got mine mixed up so i'm going to just give you a couple of minutes to mix your colors up now i'll just talk a little bit while you're mixing your colors as well um to make the painting more interesting we're not just leaving it as watercolor we're adding some cling film around the petals to make nice patterns and also in the center to give texture we're adding some salt. I've got rock salt and I've got table salt. They both work really well. Um, the rock salt, which is the bigger gra grains um, like that, if you can just zoom in on that, um, Kelly. Can you see that? Yeah, they're really big grains. Uh, they'll make bigger marks. And obviously the finer table salt, that'll make finer, smaller marks. And so we're using that in the centre to add some texture. So I presume you've all mixed up your colours now, so we'll get started. And it's quite fast going, and this is normal for me, as you know. Sorry, Jay, we just got a, we just got a couple of questions on Q&A. Um, okay. Kelly. Just the make of the gold powder, first of all. Okay, it's Schmincke. It's a German firm, Schmincker Aqua Bronze, it's called. And they do do it in bronze colour. They do it in silver and they do it in about three shades of gold. And this is called Rich Bale Gold. And I like that gold best of all. So it's just a Schmincker Aqua Bronze in Rich Pale Gold. You can get it from all the main art suppliers. Any more questions? Shall we get started then? Oh, because one more here, sorry, I'll block okay. watercolours, okay. Yeah, fine. Block watercolours are fine. You just need to mix plenty up, get plenty oh, of water on them and, and really, you know, work your brush into them and get lots of creamy paint ready because we've got to work really quick and get the cling film on else it'll start drying and the cling film won't do anything. So you need plenty of paint mixed up, more than you'd think you'd need because we haven't got time to stop and mix more. Okay. And does sea salt work? I mean, someone's yeah. asked. Yeah. Yeah, sea salt's fine. Any salt's fine. Absolutely. So let's get started then, shall we? And I normally have a brush for each colour. I find that works best for me. So I've got four brushes on the go. And what um, I want to try and get across to you is trying to find the main painting I did, which is this one. Um, I think what made this quite um, attractive is the uneven um, petals. You know, we've got, I'm not actually painting every single petal. I'm just putting some color on and pulling one or two petals out. And that's what makes it more interesting than one that's painted perfectly and every petal being the same and all regulated, you know. So the way to do that is 
I'm going straight into the yellow paint and I'm starting from the center, um, sorry, I'm from the outer edge of the circle and I'm just putting some paint round, kind of anyhow, I'm not thinking about, oops, I've dipped in the wrong one. <laughs> not thinking about petal shapes or anything now, I'm just getting some paint around the edge of that circle. And then I'm having a look at it and think, yeah, I'll pull, pull a, a bit of a petal shape out there and there, you know, just to make a nice shape, but I don't want them to be symmetrical at all. And I'm painting up to my outer rim of the circle and just feathering off a bit when I get to the edge of where I'm suggesting, suggesting is the word, suggesting a petal. And I quite like that, you know, so I'm quite happy with that. So I'm quickly now, by the way, you sh um, don't you do anything yet until I tell you to, because you've got to get some cling film ready and I forgot to say that. So um, I'm going now into the, dark yellow and in my case it's called quinacridone gold and just here and there on one or two petals I'm just adding that little bit of colour and you'll see it really spreads out so don't go overboard with it else we'll lose the yellow the freshness of the actual sunflower so I'm just touching here and there with that quinacridone gold I mean you could use orange if you wanted to and straight away now, this is what you need to get ready, is some cling film or in the US, plastic wrap, as they call it. And, and just put on the petals in different areas. Scrunch up some cling film onto the paint. And you'll see that it'll make really nice patterns. but you, it won't work obviously if the paint's dry. So that's why we have to be quite quick and it spreads that gold out into the yellow. And um, it just makes a lovely, interesting sunflower petal. So I've got that now on all of my petals and the edge of the cling film is right up to the edge of the circle so the cling film is actually up to there and then out over the petals and you need to scrunch it a bit to, so you'll see how you need to make patterns by scrunching it so rip some cling film up just about half a dozen pieces small pieces and now it's your turn to to do that part so I'll give you three or four minutes to do that now And if anyone wants to ask any questions why I'm not doing anything, feel free. I'm sure you're all busy beavering away getting your cling film ready. So we've done that then, and now we're going to do the centre. Um, so I hope you've got your salt ready and everything. Now, when you're using salt, the timing has to be, it's quite... Um, You've got to be on the ball, you know, you need to put it on just when the shine is going off the watercolour, when it's just st starting to dry and you'll get lots of lovely white marks. But in, in this case, I'm not that bothered about that. I just want a grainy texture like the centre of a watercolour, um, not watercolour, the centre of a sunflower, um, just to give that um, textured look. So if I get white marks, all well and good, but as long as I get that grainy salt staying in the paint it'll still look good you know so I'm getting the um, brown and before I just need a clean brush just bear with me now I want to ease the brown underneath the cling film um, but what I'm doing before that I'm just wetting the center not ever so wet just dampening it really with clean water 
and you'll have plenty of time to do this. So I should just hang on till I've done it and then um, because I have to work quick again. Anyway, so I'm going in with the brown and I'm not painting up to the edge yet, not painting up to the edge of the circle. I'm leaving a little gap at the moment. Now, if I just left that brown, that'd be pretty boring, wouldn't it? So let's add a little bit of the, whatever you use for the darker yellow. Let's add a little bit of that in. We do want a light area leaving, you know, we, we, we don't want one solid mass of brown. And um, let's add a bit of blue, you know, why? Why, do, why add blue? Well, because I want it to be interesting, you know. If you look at the centre of a sunflower, there's all sorts of colours you can see. And to make your painting nice and attractive, you could add turquoise, you can add anything. There's no law against it, you know, just do something unusual. So now I'm just getting some more brown paint. So that's all in the middle, quite nice. It's a bit lighter over this side. I'll drag a little bit, little bit of that over there. And now I did wet around there. So I'm just getting this finer brush and I'm just shoving it, pushing and shoving under the cling film. And I want it to bleed under the cling film into those petals, but not a lot. Else we'll end up with two darker petals. So you might have to just raise the cling film just a little bit or just try and push your brush underneath to get some of that paint to go under there. Now why I'm doing this I'm thinking oh is it drying too fast you know I've got to get the salt on yet but I'm, out, I'm keeping my eye on it you know it's still lovely and shiny and wet. So it'll it does take a while for it to seep through, but it does go through. And if it doesn't, we can do something about that to make it. And I'll show you what that is in a minute. But we've got the gold now. OK, so that's kind of round the edges. And the gold, all I'm doing is getting my brush and tapping it. Tapping it in like that. And then we need to get the salt on. So I told you it was, you know, quite hectic. I'm doing the rock salt into the wet paint. I'm not waiting for it to nearly dry. If it is nearly dry and all well and good, it doesn't matter. And I'll sprinkle a bit of table salt as well. Just for a little bit more interest. So if you can see mine now, um, try and lift it up more towards the camera. It's not, it is seeping underneath the cling film, but not a great deal. But this is what happens, it carries on working, you know, it'll gradually go under. It's not properly dry. But as long as I show you now how to finish the painting off, then, you know, you can, everyone watching can always do it when their work is dry. Um, so this is mine, um, what I did earlier. And um, as you can see, I've not pulled the um, cling film off or knocked the salt off yet. So the one that I've just done, it isn't properly dry. And when you start pulling the cling film off, you lose all the pattern if it's not dry, it just all runs in and makes a muddy color. So it's a good jo job I got one ready earlier. And the thing is with cling film, uh, you can't dry it very well with a hairdryer because if you blast it with a hairdryer, it'll just blow the cling film off. But a good tip is to get some greaseproof paper or baking paper and place that over the top and weigh it down and then dry it with a hairdryer. So if anyone you know, needs to desperately dry theirs, that's what you could do at another time. But let's pull the cling film off off this one that I did earlier that is now bone dry. And that's what I'm left with. So I'm just knocking the salt off it. So this is the one I did earlier. And one thing I meant to say was 
none of these paintings will be the same as anyone else's at all. <clears throat> you know, you can't repeat it to look more or less exactly the same. It depends on the paper, uh, how wet your paint is, how strong the paint is, and some colour seeps under. You probably, I probably went in a little bit too wet with this one, and it's probably a little bit darker than I'd have liked it. But so I'll show you how to get round that because it is a common problem. And what I'm going to do to get round that is to, I want to lighten it up in places because, you know, this is all gone in and I like it, but I'd like it a little bit lighter. And also, if you look at the shape, it's not particularly round. It's a bit of a funny shape. So I need to get my brown paint just here and there. And, and get my circle back again, you know. You only need to touch here and there just to make that happen. Put a little bit of paint and then wash back and start bringing that circle back in. So that's with the brown and uh, that's, that's looking a little bit better, isn't it? But Carol here is asking, could she use brusho for effect? Yeah, you can do. I don't use brusho. I don't like it very much. Um, you know, there's a lot of artificial colours in brusho, but I know a lot of people do like it, and, and that would be ideal for the centre, actually, I should imagine. Okay. And Diane Peck recommends Winsor & Newton's uh, gold acrylic for those who are okay. looking for choice. <laughs> Yeah, so can you see um, how nice and textured the centre is? It's not showing it up a great deal, um, trying to get up close to the camera. It's this area here that I find a little bit heavy. So the way to get around that is to go back into the yellow paint and probably just mix it just a little bit thicker, add a little bit more. And this adds interest as well. And people that know me, they know I'm always spattering with a palette knife. And this is a good way to kind of lighten up, say, that area there, which I can't paint watercolour over that because watercolour, you work light to dark. You can't work light on top of dark by just painting. You know, it wouldn't cover it. Well, with, with acrylics it would, but um, not with watercolour. So I'm going to spatter just there with a palette knife. And when you spatter, you're leaving globules of paint that is a lot more intense than if I'm painting it on. So therefore, I've lost that bit of a dark area. I've lifted it by just spattering some paint on. Can you see that? And that kind of makes it OK, you know, it's... So I'm, I'm going to do a bit of spattering all over now, just here and there, all over the centre, but not in the same colour, is what I mean. So I'm going to leave the petals alone. I've got a little area there that's a bit um, dark, so in where the petals should be. You have no control over cling film when you're painting, obviously, hardly any control. You can pull it into shapes and things like that. You know, you can stretch it, but when the paint starts meandering underneath, you haven't really got a lot of control. And this is a nice thing, you know, it's, it's unpredictable and it's loose. And that's what makes the paintings nice. So I'm going into the gold now. I'm going to spatter a little bit of more gold. So when I spatter with a palette knife, um, I use it upside down. It's I'm right-handed, so I hold it in my left hand and I turn it upside down like that. Okay, but first of all, I add some ink on the underneath, sorry, paint or ink, and then turn it upside down. And then I put my thumb on it and then kind of ping it. 
That's a really useful tip. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite a challenge, splattering, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. But when you get used to it, it's like riding a bike. You yeah. just don't think anything of it, you know. So mm. just going in with quinacridone gold there in that lighter area. And then what you can do, you know, it's your painting. I want you to um, decide for yourself. But if you wanted to bring, you know, lighten any of the, any of the petals with quite a thick, um, bright yellow paint, you could suggest a bit of a petal edge, something like that, that gives a little bit more definition if you wanted to, you know, just here and there. Or if it's a really, say that there is quite, dark I could with this cadmium lemon you can paint over it a little bit but it'll dry not as bright as that um, they always dry a bit duller watercolors they don't dry brighter but it just lightens it a little bit and I'll just make sure my circle's right um, that's looking better now got a bit more definition in Just touching here and there with the brown. But you can do, you know, you can do what you want with this. You could, you could put some collage on it, you know, in the center or on the petals here and there, um, some tissue paper. You could add, um, you know, those little seeds I've just been on about. You could stick some of them in the center and make it really textured, something like that. Um, anything to, I love texture. Okay, so I think that's... What I find really exciting about your work, Jane, is um, is the texture you bring to watercolour. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's my favourite bit, you know, I just love texture. And mm, me too. Create it. So now I could even use the brown, you know, this is just ideas for you to take yours further. I could use the brown to kind of define separate petals if you wanted to, you know, something like that. But I prefer it as it is and it's nice and loose. And, you know, I think it'd be nice to spot it. I'll tell you what would be nice in the middle, a purpley colour because yellow and um, purple are the opposites on the colour wheel so therefore they, sh they set one another off you know um, that's the purpose of the colour colour wheel you know opposites um, show each other off so the opposite of yellow is purple so that would be quite good colour to use in the centre there. June Covey said thank you Jane such fun I'm always learning something new <laughs> which oh, is great is it? <laughs> that's it yeah thank you. So I'm just going to pop a mark around that now and let's have a look at it. And I don't think it, you do all the hard work in the beginning, you know. And um, so that's not too bad. That's, um, it's quite got a quite interesting centre and there's a shine on it. It looks 3D and that's because we've gone from dark to medium to light. And, um, you know, it does look like it's um, concave or convex, which is it when it comes out. John. <laughs> um, anyway, convex it looks come silly. Out. Because, yeah. Anyway. Convex. yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, I hope you've enjoyed it and, um, you know, you'll have a go and probably do your own take on it. You know, I'd love to see what you can come up with. Oh, yes. Now you've fit, now we've finished this. Yes, everyone can post their uh, pictures yeah. into Facebook. Post um, pictures on, yeah. Or um, Sasha's put, wow, that looks amazing. Thank you so much, Jane. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> Thank Sasha. you, Sasha. Look forward to seeing yours, Sasha. Yes. Yeah. So um, so that's about it then, really. Yeah. Thank you, Jane. Looks amazing, and it's uh, framed. Is your um, the one you were working on? Has that dried? Have a look. So just wondering where we're at yeah. with that and um, if people are able hopefully to carry on with theirs now. So yeah. 
Um, it's drying, but I'll show you. So, and how would you say, how are you identifying it to be dried just by looking? Well, you can see it. Just, yeah, the, it's quite hard yeah, on the camera. It's still shiny. Okay. Still shiny. Yeah. So, so um, yeah. Patience. Patience is. Yes, is about unfortunately. Um, You've got a beautiful sunflower. Yeah, but I thought it was a really nice one to do, even though probably the people, you know, you people watching at home probably couldn't complete it the same time as me. But, you know, there's hardly anything to do once it's dry. Yeah. And only a bit of spattering and just um, getting the circle back again if you've lost it. You know, you know we, we don't want a real straight edge circle, though. But, you know, we don't want it going off in a corner or something either. So, um so that's all you need to do, just tidy, tidy it up and, and spatter and, and you're finished, you know. Right.